What's up guys, Kale here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about comparators. First, some basics about the comparator. You need three pieces of stone, three redstone torches, and a nether quartz in this configuration on a crafting interface, and that will give you one comparator. A comparator is directional with the white arrow pointing in the direction that it's facing, and it will always place facing away from you, and will be dropped if the block below it is destroyed, or if water flows into it, or if a piston pushes it, and it will be destroyed by flowing lava. Comparators have two modes signified by the front redstone torch. If it's off, it's in compare mode. If the torch is on, then it is in subtract mode. More on both of these later on in the video. Comparators interact with redstone through a primary input from the rear, two secondary inputs on both sides, and the output on the front. A comparator will output the same signal strength that it receives from its rear input. A comparator can receive a input from the side, either from a piece of redstone dust, a redstone block, a redstone torch, or a redstone repeater. Comparators activate at a one tick or 0.1 second delay, which is the same as a repeater set to one tick. And the third and final function of a comparator is the ability to check the state of a block. So this is your containers, or as you'll see later on in the video, several other blocks. Now first, let's delve into the first function of a comparator, which is to compare redstone signals. The basic premise behind this function is that it compares the side input to the rear input and will either output or not output accordingly. If the signal on the side is stronger than the signal on the rear, then no output will occur. But if the signal in the back is stronger than the signal on the side, then an output equivalent to the rear input will occur. Now this hodgepodge of signs, dust, levers, and redstone lamps is here to better explain the compare function of a comparator. Now, like I said before, the output will be equivalent to the rear input. So if we have an input from the rear of 14, then we will have an output in the front of 14 as well. And this is true for any of these. So if we have an input of one, we will have an output of one as well. Now that's good if you're sending a signal straight through the comparator, but if you're comparing a signal from the side, then the signal from the rear must be greater than or equal to the signal from the side. For example, if we have a signal of 11 on the side and only have a signal strength of 10 from the rear, then nothing will output. But as soon as we bump that up to 11 or higher, we'll have an output equivalent to the input of the rear once again. So if you have a redstone block on the side of your comparator, then it is receiving a signal strength of 15 on the side. And you must also have a signal strength of 15 coming in from the rear for the comparator to output a signal. Anything less, the comparator will not output that signal. Now, let's take a look at the subtract function of a comparator. First and foremost, we're going to put our comparator in subtract mode. And once again, we'll be using these signs to see the signal strength that we're putting into the comparator. Now, like I said before, the comparator in subtract mode will subtract the signal from the side input from the signal in the back. For example, if we have a signal strength of 10 coming in from the rear, and we subtract five from that, we should have a signal output of five. And if you look over here, that holds true. And along those same lines, if you have the same signal strength coming in from the rear as you do from the signal coming in from the side, then there will be no signal output because the two signal strengths cancel each other out. Now we could continue this on with other mathematic equations such as 15 minus 13 equaling two, but I won't bore you with all the math. One interesting application of the subtract function of a comparator, though, is if you run the output signal back around and into the side input, then the resulting effect is this pulsating redstone signal that can be useful for about anything that you can think of that might need this kind of signal. Now, the third and perhaps most interesting function of a comparator is the, its ability to read a block state. So what I mean by this is it's able to tell if a container has something inside of it and output a signal accordingly. Now, what I have right here shows that the comparator is also showing how full that container is proportional to the amount of inventory slots that are in that container and whether or not the item that is inside stacks, doesn't stack, stacks to 64 or stacks to 16 and then outputs that signal proportional to the maximum redstone signal of 15. This is the basic idea behind the shulker box loader that I made, which if you haven't watched that already, there's a link to that video in the top right hand corner of this video right now. You can find this with its compare function. You can place a, a redstone block, which has a signal strength of 15 
to be able to tell whether or not the container is completely full or not. As you can see, this shulker box is almost completely full aside from one block, and the comparator does not give an output. But the second we fill it up completely, then it will give a output signal. But to go more in depth with the comparator's ability to read a block state, we already mentioned that it can read the contents of any container. So this is your chest, trap chest, all of the furnace variants. So the, the furnace, the smoker, and the blast furnace, the dispenser, the dropper, shulker boxes, of course, barrels, and hoppers. You can also use a comparator to read how full a minecart container is, as long as it's on a detector rail. A comparator is able to tell the block state of a container even through a block as long as it is not a transparent block. It has to be a block that redstone signals can normally pass through. Now there are also some weird ones. So you can take a comparator output from cake, which will tell you how many slices of cake are remaining. And what's weird about this one is the max output isn't actually the full 15, it's 14. You can also take a comparator signal from a composter to tell how much compost is in it. And this has a max output of eight. Same thing with the brewing stand, to be able to tell how many potions are on said brewing stand, this has a max output of 9. Once again with cauldrons, to be able to tell how much water is in the cauldron, this has a max output of 3. Another interesting one, you're able to use a comparator to tell whether or not a jukebox is playing music or not. You can also use a comparator to tell the amount of honey that's in a bee's nest, which the max output for this one is 5. And you can also use a comparator to tell whether or not an end portal frame has an eye of ender in it or not. Now some new ones, you're able to use the target block for a comparator signal, as well as the new respawn anchor. Now interestingly enough, unlike some of the other blocks I mentioned, the redstone signal that this outputs is actually full value and is proportional to the amount of the amount of glowstone you have in the respawn anchor. Another cool one is that you can take a comparator to read what page you're on of a book that's placed on a lectern. It's proportional to the signal strength of 15. So if you have 15 pages in the book, the 15th page will be the only page that will output a signal of 15. But if you only have five, then the fifth page will be the page that outputs a signal strength of 15. More on the target block, depending on where you hit the target block, the comparator will output accordingly to where you hit it. So only when you hit a perfect bullseye will a signal strength of 15 be output. Last but not least on the list of block states that the comparator is able to read, it can read what direction an item in an item frame is pointing. And the max signal that it can output is 8 because there are only 8 different angles or directions that an item can point in a item frame. Now some blocks that a comparator seem like they might be able to read but can't are anvils. It cannot detect how damaged an anvil is. And the comparator also is unable to tell how much food is being cooked on a campfire. Now finally, this last thing technically could fit into the category of, of the comparing function, but I felt it deserved its own category, category because of its usefulness. You can actually use comparators to extend a redstone pulse. As you can see, the more comparators that you add, the longer the signal stays. However, this is only true to a maximum of 10 comparators. Anything past that, you'll get this sort of pulsating effect, which will eventually die out, which could be useful for some contraptions, but if you just want a steady signal that holds out for a longer period of time, then 10 is the max that you can do here. That's not to say you can't use comparators to get a longer signal than these initial 10, but in order to do so, you must break it up with a, you must break it up with a section of redstone dust. Anyway, I hope that this video has been helpful and helps you understand comparators just a little bit more. And I know that making this video, I, I myself learned a few things about the comparator. But if you did learn something from this video, be sure to leave a like, consider subscribing, drop a question in the comment section, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.